methodology data collection and results. As we indicated earlier, the methodology is social cognitive theory, specifically emergent interactive agency model, which indicates that self-determination is emergent and dynamic, and that individuals can direct and alter their own behavior. They possess an innate ability to influence their outcomes despite circumstances. And that's the key here, despite circumstances. We know that there's general cumulative disadvantage that occurs with this population. Generally, from a psychosocial perspective, they all come out with stigma trouble getting a job, living conditions, etc. So they all come out with this basic conglomeration of disadvantages. But what is it that makes some prevail in spite of that? One quote says, any account of the determinants of human action must include self-generated influences as a contributing factor. This is important to hold in mind as we move forward with the presentation. This is an action research study because it focuses on the best in people, the strengths in the system, the strengths in what we have community-wise to meet the needs of this population. And it's in a systematic inquiry. It seeks to strengthen the restorative justice system's capacity to achieve greater potential. It facilitates a strengths-based understanding of reintegration from the perspectives of formerly incarcerated individuals. So data collection for formerly incarcerated individuals included an online survey. The surveys began with exclusive criteria so that if they, they met an exclusive standard that would disqualify them from the study, then no further information was gathered on those individuals. It included inclusive criteria and, of course, the informed consent. That information was provided to the researcher and they also provided their approval to conduct a telephone interview that included seven open-ended questions. Those interviews were recorded and eventually transcribed. Now, for current and former parole and probation officers, we took an online survey and included informed consent and, and several open-ended questions. During the process of data collection and analysis, the researcher also maintained a field journal with notes and observations during the process. Now, sampling occurred through a non-randomized convenience sample of formerly incarcerated males and females between the ages of 35 and 75. They had no mental or physical challenges. Not, they were not required to report under Megan's law requirements, and they'd been out of prison for eight years or more. Their most recent release date, therefore, was on or before 1-1-2009. And all of these participants had to be formally incarcerated in the United States. Additional factors involving whether or not they qualified for the study included they could not be under current court supervision. They could not be under court-ordered residential substance abuse treatment. And they should not have currently been under the care of mental health professionals. Now, group two, which is the parole and probation officers, that was conducted through a non-randomized convenience sample, and the current and former probation officers had to have been stationed within United States prisons. Now, let's discuss the participants. Group one, formerly incarcerated individuals. We 
had four participants. One was female and three were males. The participant A had been out of prison for 23 years with no further incarcerations. Participant B also 23 years since they had been released with no subsequent incarcerations. One had been out for 15 years, no subsequent incarcerations, and one was out for 20 years with no subsequent incarcerations. Participant A had a total of four incarcerations in their lifetime. Participant B reported a total of three incarcerations prior to permanent desistance. Participant C had been incarcerated two times before his desistance. And participant D had a total of two incarcerations before desisting. So the average incarcerations were 2.75. Group 2, current and former parole and probation officers. One, 16 years or more. Two, had been a probation officer for 11 to 15 years. C, had been a probation or parole officer was for 6 to 10 years. D, had a 6 to 10 year tenure as a parole or probation officer. E, 16 years or more. And F, 16 years or more. Now, all of the information that we took from the interviews and the surveys, and you remember, the parole and probation officers had open-ended surveys that had to be categorized and evaluated and recategorized. All of the interview transcripts were coded, so were the surveys taken by the parole and probation officers, and they were narrowed down according to the triarchic reciprocal causality model into personal, behavioral, and environmental. Personal consists of self-concept, self-efficacy, self-esteem, self-regulation, self-evaluation, goals, outcome, expectation, beliefs, and attitude. Behavioral included human agency, self-determination, reflection, forethought, motivation, clear intentions, execution, and intrinsic internal focus. Environmental factors included modeling, resources, other people, physical settings, instruction, and feedback. All of the data was coded and, of course, it had to be distilled a couple of times. Eventually, we got it down to these three aspects. <laughs> 